Emma said, these icons, but they're also so relatable. And I was surprised that I felt bad for Margaret Thatcher from time to time. Um, I'm really curious, did you, you know, did you have previous impressions of her and did those change? Well, I, I think they're relatable. Um, Peter's version of these characters are relatable. And that's one of his great gifts is making uh, very, you know, writing very three-dimensional characters and um, characters who are, you know, who you forgive somehow in, in their behavior, even if they behave appallingly sometimes. Mm -hmm. You see the balance of that behavior in, in other actions and aspects of their personality that, that make you kind of understand um, why they make the choices that they make and makes you kind of question your preconceptions about them. And so in that complexity, I think was an aspect that maybe I hadn't even seen in the research that I had done of Thatcher. I'd certainly, you know, having, I, I got very lucky um, this particular year of playing her because there was this phenomenal BBC documentary about Thatcher that came out right when I was researching her. And it was also kind of the first time that there was, um, uh, you know, that, that we saw behind the scenes and saw her, you know, uh, before, you know, when the cameras were turned on, but before she was necessarily on performing, when she was rehearsing moments of speeches and we saw her, you know, at home with Dennis, which, you know, the camera's still rolling, so she's performing. But it, it felt like that was the first time at least I had seen another side of her. And that was then extended in how Peter portrayed her. And so it's much more a portrayal of her, you know, or not, it's as much a portrayal of her as mother and as wife as it is her as prime minister. And, and so I think that, you know, was quite interesting, fascinating, refreshing for some people to see. Josh, what was it like coming back? After um, it was Shakespearean. It was such a good scene. Mm -hmm. Very I mean, weird. Mm -hmm. the whole cast is, is full of these great complex relationships. Jillian, I love your scenes with Olivia Coleman. Um, even though Margaret is, is treated like an outsider for, for most of it, you know, this, this lovely sort of coda where the queen, you know, recognizes her at the end. Um, uh, Josh and Emma, you both have wonderful scenes with Emerald Fennell as Camilla Parker Bowles. Um, I'm just sort of curious, you know, what they're like as scene partners. I mean, everyone in this cast is, is phenomenal, but um, Jillian, when you know, knew you were going to have those scenes with Olivia Coleman, were you, were you intimidated at all? Um, it's impossible to be intimidated by Olivia Coleman, I think. I'd, I'd already met her a few times and, it, you know, she makes it very easy um, uh, to like her. And um, she uh, immediately drops her guard, drops, you know, which drops your guard. And, and so I, I, my biggest concern was that I'd, I'd have been working really, really hard for a really long time and that I'd get there and I wouldn't be able to keep a straight face. <laughs> I think that's what, and there was a, um, what was it? A, a camera test that we did where I, I hadn't found Thatcher yet. And so I was feeling, I was just, I was a bit nervous and I was feeling a bit, um, uh, not, not intimidated in any way by her at all, but I was standing next to someone who had already done a season of, of The Crown and I hadn't figured out a few things. And um, and we were goofing around in between, you know, walking from, that's all you do in a camera test is walk from point A to point B, turn to the right, turn to the back, turn to the left, you know. And, um, and we were goofing around in between and then, the minute but well, we were slightly scolded for um for not paying attention and um or at least you know time to focus and she was so quick to die i mean like negative count of negative one and uh she was the queen again in face and posture and everything and i was still you know trying to you know pull my face back together again and uh, I thought, oh, I'm fucked. I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> I'm so I'm in trouble. I'm I'm in big trouble. <laughs> it's okay when you say the F word. It sounds really elegant. So just yeah. get away with it. <laughs> I will. Yep. Emma, uh, one of the most talked about scenes is uh, <gasps> I do the scene holding Chris's hands, and the get the the thing he said was, when whoever thinks they have the most power in that moment should hold Josh's hand, and basically it was just Emerald holding Josh's hand the entire scene, and me just trying to like, <laughs> oh yeah. my god, it was I so love much. that so it was much. Also, like, the most fun for me because all I just got to watch these two amazing actors like nailing it and me just like literally just sat there with my hand <laughs> <laughs> what a great idea brilliance uh, uh, i addressed earlier the research you did for these characters but um i'm sort of curious because you all embody them so well i mean jillian you have margaret thatcher's low bow and her voice and emma you really have to recreate diana's most talked about looks and and josh there, there's a whole thing with your posture when you're charles that is completely different um can you talk about you know putting on the wigs and the makeup and the costumes and how that helps you find your character I think I realized because it was going to be because of when I started the research and needed just for my own feeling of safety um, to start working on something to do with her quite early on. Um, obviously, you know, reading and watching things, etc. But the, the you know because I didn't have costume and wig and etc. You know, at home, um, I. Uh, I started working on the voice quite early, and even though uh, it, I heard it in my head, I knew what it was in my head, but I didn't feel like I could release it yet um, for quite a time. But the fact that I was working on it felt like I was, you know, moving forward anyway. And um, and then I realised at some point that, you know, even though the other bits, the silhouette of what Thatcher is and her um, her wig and her posture and her walk and the particular clothes and her girth and all of that is definitely adds to and tells a part of an accurate story of this human being. Without the voice, it wouldn't be Thatcher. Whereas you could have just the voice and none of those things and you'd know I, I don't know I just I felt it suddenly occurred to me I think and maybe that's why it took me so long to reveal it or allow it to come out as I realized how high the stakes were with her voice because you could get the clothes wrong but you'd understand it with the voice and the wig and you, the wig you know and but something about the voice needed to be um I needed to find that or the balance of it between hers and mine um early on and so yeah I've rambled I can't even remember what your question was <laughs> well I'm actually curious the first time you did see yourself in like the hair and makeup test was it did, were you thrown off by how much you looked like her um well you know it's weird because it, the, the, for whatever reason when I was sitting in hair makeup the minute you put that wig on me uh I look a bit like that <laughs> And <laughs> that not, you know, and yes, there was a lot of thought and effort uh, that went into um, the makeup and other aspects of, you know, uh, how I held my face and everything. But there's just something about th that, th the combination of the wig and the fact that we've got quite a similar nose, I think, and hooded eyes. It's um, so quite early on, I think we all went, <gasps> you know, even before they had done all of the makeup stuff and I think everyone thought well we you know we're on the right track forget you know <laughs> did you have any kind of prosthetics around the mouth or were you just holding it that way uh no no prosthetics just wow. uh, um yeah that's amazing <laughs> yeah it's a, it's an easy trap to get caught in though uh you know it's 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 I, I found that by the end of filming I rely on it just a little bit too much by the end, you know, there's something, so, this trick that gets me into her or makes me feel more like her. It certainly became something that um, 
different aspects of, you know, that I were, were I was, you know, just pressing on it just a bit more by the end. And Emma, what about for you? You're creating really you. Well, I'm, um, I'm not conflict averse. <laughs> I love conflict. <laughs> no, uh, uh, I think probably, probably the audience scenes. I think just because there were so many of them, they were often block shot over a two or three days, different episodes. Um, and so, uh, you know, figuring out what was different between them, trying to make them different, what, where she was on her journey that contributed to, on her journey, uh, that, that contributed to how she delivered information or reacted to the queen in those particular um, scenes. Um, and also feeling, I, I was so certain that, you know, not to say anything about Peter's writing, because it's um, brilliant, but I, I just assumed that the audience was be as bored by them as I was challenged by them, <laughs> and that people would go fast forward, fast forward. Oh, it's done now. We can get on to the, you know. And it turns <laughs> out that people actually really liked them. I was so shocked when I heard that. I really thought that. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that says more about my sense of self worth, I think, than anything. Well, no. Um, yeah, so yeah, but it, it was, um, I, I felt the most nervous about doing those. So I guess that uh, indicates to some degree um, my feeling about the challenge of them. Last November, it was such a hot topic amongst everyone. What do you think it was about this season and, and this time period specifically that captivated viewers so much? Because we're so good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Um, I think a lot of it is is also because it's you know it, it's closer to the present, and so we're we're you know there's a lot of people who are alive today who, uh, or more of a handful of people who are alive today who are um, uh, remember and and uh, are moved by those memories, but also I think there's a big thing that um, Pete always talked about. And the the infusion of youth, you know, the Ooh. infusion of youth in in the seasons, because it, you know, be, because it's about, um, you know, sp specifically this the middle bit, the middle bit with, you know, an Olivia and a Thatcher, um, you know, us old cronies. The the idea that there are these fantastic young actors to balance out all that curmudgeonly stuff is uh adds such life and light and um uh and and also not to mention potentially even brings in a whole other demographic which is going to be good for uh netflix and um so i i think those those elements have something to do with that I think also just, I guess it was, it was a really more. Not the, you think about the Elton John song that uh, was playing, that no, Rocket Man or something being played while. Oh, that's Aaron. Was driving, where Aaron's driving. That's, a, no, that's it, not that, but it, that is also a great example of. Yeah, it's kind of just like, moment. oh, sick. This is like, yeah. sick. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> well, it is. Such a fantastic season. It is such a great show. I want to remind everyone you can watch all the seasons of The Crown on Netflix now. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.